All right, we're going to cover some KDA. The first thing I'm noticing is that uh, KDA is hanging out near its lows and it's not outperforming Bitcoin at all as Bitcoin dominance is dropping. So when Bitcoin dominance drops, that is that essentially means altcoins are flying harder, right? Even if Bitcoin just goes up on a lower high, doesn't really like do anything fantastic. That if Bitcoin dominance is dropping during that type of bearish movement, but oscillation up on Bitcoin, that means a lot of altcoins are going to make higher local highs, right? They're going to start making a one hour uptrend or a day, potentially a daily uptrend. And uh, KDA is not. It's not. It's it, so from its lows. Let me make myself smaller here. From its lows, these two lows down here, which are their all time lows of, of 2022, it's only 15% uh, above those. 16. And Bitcoin is 15% above uh, its lows. So that means KDA is exactly with Bitcoin. But but the bad thing is, so it's not, you know, that's not horrible news. But just, I want you to realize the ramifications of that. Some alts are flying. Some alts are popping. KDA is not. I need, like, keep that in mind. I know a lot of people are super bullish on it. But if, you know, I, I just take that information for what you will. It's not flying where, uh, along with other coins that have some serious interest with money behind it. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm definitely not fighting on anything. I'm just literally stating facts of the charts. All right. I would say if Bitcoin or if, if SPX gets a good Friday closure on the 2nd of September and Bitcoin could go slide, slide, slide ways, <laughs> let's slide ways. I was going to say slightly up and sideways. I might have just invented a new word <laughs> going slideways. <laughs> uh, my kids invented the word hanitizer. I don't know if they actually invented it, but they say it. maybe they got it off of some YouTuber they watch or whatever. Uh, but uh, anyway, hanitizer. So hanitizer slideways. Um, if Bitcoin does go sideways after a good SPX closure, where would KDA go to the upside? The daily 89, I don't think is going to be in play. That's way too much. Um, Bitcoin only has to go 5% to meet uh, its target of a daily 21. And th this just isn't going to be in play. So you don't need the daily 89 as a best friend on this one. Like you do on Litecoin and Ethereum, this one gets activated tomorrow as a key target if SPX close is good. On KDA, that's not the case because it, it, it won't hit it um, under those parameters. So let's throw on some other stuff here. And that's the four hour ten. It's already above that. That's the daily nine. That's the day. It'll get above the daily ten. That's also the daily. That's the daily twenty one. So honestly, if um, so with a good SPX closure, what activates for Bitcoin as its primary target is the daily twenty one. That's Bitcoin. I think it's also the case for. I think it's just going to keep following Bitcoin. Um, I think the, oh, I didn't mean to draw a fib. I think the daily twenty one will be your best friend on KDA with a good closure tomorrow on traditional finance. If traditional finance takes a poo tomorrow, okay, so change the topic. So do you want me to put a price on that? Here, let's put a price on it. It probably aligns with some horizontals uh, as well, but let's do this. So tomorrow, you know, it might not happen for a little bit, but it, it could even wick above, something like there, this yellow line. And let's look left to see if there's some horizontal work there. Strong wick, strong, st not a strong wick, but a wick. All right, so I'm looking at, to make my horizontal, I'm eyeballing that one specifically. That's a strong one. And then I'm also looking at that guy. So let me draw a horizontal. Those aren't perfect though, but th this, one, this one's a good one. This one creates horizontals that work for sure. The other one is questionable. It's not a very good wick. Man, it might, it might have trouble doing anything. But honestly, I would say dollar seventy. It's it could if it does a failure pattern and wants to touch a more recent structure like this and these wicks down here. The, if it goes a little higher than that, it's gonna have immediate resistance, like right here. So I would have an immediate target of dollar seventy. If it if it happens to start outperforming Bitcoin, which could happen on the if if Bitcoin you know can run confidently for five or go slideways for five days, 
170 to 180. 180, I think, is less probable, but it could do it. Um, as as Bitcoin dominance is dropping more and more and more, I think people might start taking profits on some of the hotter alts, and they might start looking for to dump it in other stuff. So this this could start outperforming. Those would be my upward targets. Now, if it slides down, so no no Bitcoin slideways, but rather it goes down uh, from a bad SPX closure on Friday. Well, my black triangle isn't going to, well, it still has time. Then my black triangle will be hit. <laughs> uh, it, it looks like it's going to get avoided. Uh, so let's, so this looks like it's going to have a massive horizontal here. Let, let's find out what, so downside targets exactly what to put on your chart. So watch me try to figure this out real quick. Um, I want exactitude. Similar to how I got exactly 1620 on that recent wick up on Ethereum before it moved down like 5%. Uh, just slammed up and then came right back down. Um so this is how I did that. I start on the week, or actually sometimes I start on the monthly. Even though that was an upside target, I would say one box is from that monthly wick to that monthly wick. Let's see how this aligns on the weekly. That's exact. Yeah, that's going to be your target. Um, that was easy. Yeah, clear and obvious target. Okay, so it's just the it's just the recent lows. Um, it'll it'll probably get some bounce from there. So let me uh, zoom into the 15 minute. No, I'll go to the one hour chart. Um, downside targets with a bad SPX closure on Friday you're uh you're gonna see price i wish i can i'm gonna leave this triangle here. i want to move it right now but i'm gonna leave it there just in case it does pierce it i can say hey it did hit my triangle but as of now it kind of looks like it's not but bad closure i can see price maybe a second roundup maybe you know it could do something like this or or just doesn't go up at all just bam one of those two with a potential for a second re rejection so test of the origin line before it falls down and then a possible retest of it but it also could just hang out i think this uh this this horizontal can make price hang out so let's see how far of a drop that would be let's make sure this makes it yeah 12 three, that makes sense um and that would mean that bitcoin has fallen down to its point of control in its channel so this is the horizontal to be looking at. So this horizontal with uh, with upper and lower targets of 30, so it's a three cent range. $1.37 to $1.40 horizontal will be your best friend. And just like I did uh, for the, I, don't, I can't remember if it was for this one or if it was for Litecoin, we, we went hunting um, for an EMA to the upside. Let's, let's see if there's an EMA down here um, to give a double support. I have a feeling there might be, but let's, let's take a look. I want to know, I want to be able to tell you exactly, you know, what best tools on your chart for either case, because it, it really could go either way, but it's going to be easy to identify. Okay. Once we realize it's going up, what do I need on my chart? So I've already done that for the upside. I think there should be one more tool for the downside. Um, let's do... And it's below everything. <sighs> there are no, so it's below all of its important EMAs. Uh, so it's just that horizontal is going to be your best friend. Easy, easy peasy horizontal. So that is going to be your favorite tool uh, for downside targets. And again, the it's a three cent range between a dollar thirty seven to a dollar forty. And again, what happens after that juncture? I'll have to see what Bitcoin and the stock market are doing. I don't, I don't want to guess what happens beyond there. But downside move, I could see this hit. I pr probably get some type of bounce, hangs out before really tanking. Now, if there's just a catastrophic sell-off on Friday, okay, it's gonna bust through there, right? So minus flash crash. If So I, I, you can't really predict flash crashes uh, very well. Uh, so I'm not gonna predict that. That might be the fifth most likely, but... So save a flash crash, which has a possibility of happening. 
but I don't think it's a strong enough possibility to really consider it. I think uh, something like this to the downside is what you're looking for for KDA, and it might look exactly like that. Um, so there you go.